The picture you're about to see was made in November 1993. Some of the contents may offend you and will definitely disturb you. Any actions taken as a result of seeing this film are at your own risk. Since the beginning of time, people have tried to decipher what the future has in store for them. To this end, they have consulted oracles, diviners, clairvoyants, astrologers, and fortune tellers to alleviate their fear of the unknown. In a remote village in southern Africa lives a Sanusi, a guardian of the African culture, a diviner and prophet who is burdened with visions and predictions of future events. Historian and high priest amongst African traditional healers, he has had prophetic visions since the age of seven. Just before he experiences a vision, colors start swirling around him. Then, as though he has been transported through time and space, he finds himself in another dimension. During these visions, he becomes the character featured. His name is Credo Mutwa. I'm asking all those who believe in the power of prophecy to listen to what I've got to say. I have said many strange things, but what I'm going to say now is stranger still. Credo has clearly seen Kennedy's killer. Perhaps you know him. I was shown a man called John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The vision told me a very strange thing. Three men were chosen to destroy this man of life. The murderers who killed Kennedy laid their plans not in the United States, but in a city that I once visited, the city of London. The man who shot President Kennedy from behind had fought in the Korean War. I was shaken when I realized that the man who had killed Kennedy was still alive. And he is also one of the men who planned the downfall of President Nixon, who are planning treason against President Clinton. The second man had also been a soldier or a policeman, and he is dead. And poor Harvey Oswald, that stupid warped maniac, he got killed because the man who really had the deadly gun, which destroyed the president's head, had to be protected at all costs. He is now a man in his 70s and is a great officer in the Army of the United States. He lives in the west coast of the United States. He is a strong man who loves to catch fishes. And when he hears my words, he will know that I'm talking to him. I see your face is big and strong, but fleshy now. Your hair is thinny. Your heart is weak although you still see yourself as a strong man. I ask this man, what does he think he's doing? Killing your own flesh and blood. You are a murderer. You. And yet Kennedy had once helped you, you ungrateful white Judas. You hated red Indians and you hated black people. You wanted America to stay in a war that she was not bound to win. You son of a thousand monsters. And may as you die, the last face you see be my own. A sinister murder was made to look like suicide. Kennedy had had a secret love. A beautiful woman, a lost woman, a woman of fire and ice, a woman called Norma Jean, whose other name was Marilyn of Monroe. As a warning to Kennedy, a group of murderers sent by the shadowy people who control things in the United States and elsewhere 
gave her a drink of a terrible medicine which caused such pain within her. It was like as if she was giving birth to a child. But they put a pillow over the beautiful one. They smothered her and they did not even give her the right to scream to her ancestors for mercy. She died a horrible death alone. She who shared Kennedy's dream. Credo predicted Dr. Favut's assassination six months before it happened, but no one believed him. I told them that Dr. Favut was going to die and he would die from a knife wound. And one of the white gentlemen told me angrily not to talk rubbish. You know, I never, I never thought of it, that uh, uh, something could happen like that, you know. He warned that violence would erupt in Soweto. And the closer we got to June, the more agitated he got. And I was involved in, in a, a lot of meetings with, with all sorts of people, um, trying to warn them that you know, trouble was on the way. And not very many people were, um, were interested. They were more worried about um, bus strikes on the East Rand um, than any major trouble that may happen in Soweto. A member of the Bapututswana government asked Credo to predict what would happen in the country. I spoke to him, I think that must have been about December 1987, and uh, I wanted him to predict what was going to happen the following year. He said, well, there was going to be a lot of upheaval where attempts would be made to unseat the government. And that soldiers wearing red berets and grey uniforms would attack several very important people in the government of this land. And on the 10th of February 1988, we had a coup game of Well, I thought he was so off the war at those days, I didn't think it was worth my time. There was never any doubt in my mind that um, if Credo said something, it had to be taken seriously. No, he was quite right there, I'm telling you. <laughs> Credo foresaw George Bush's future role in the United States. Credo correctly predicted that George Bush would become president. Not only was this said well in advance of the American elections, but even during an earlier period of time when Credo visited the United States, years before he threw the bones, and said to George Bush that he would attain the highest office of the land. Clearly, his voice must be heard. Credo has made startling revelations about the critical role Princess Diana and Prince Charles will play in the future of Great Britain. Princess Diana's star will actually overshadow that of her husband. People will look upon her as the Princess of Wales and him as the non-entity. Princess Diana is unwell because she is afraid to face the life that she is leading. She is a child who should have lived in a peaceful cottage, but she has been thrown into the glare of unsought publicity. She is like a little butterfly caught in a fennet. I am sorry for her, but I am just as sorry for Charles, because I do not see him wearing the crown of the ancient kings of England. I am sorry for him, because one day people will say that he was the man who, whose actions seriously weakened the British monarchy. The world will blame him for the disintegration of the British monarchy and nobility somewhere in the 21st century. It was wrong for Charles and Diana to separate. They should have stayed together. They should have tried to love and understand and forgive each other. But they did not. 
and as a result they have set the wheels in motion for an incident in which the lives of Prince William will be seriously threatened. When that little boy reaches his 13th or 14th year, an attempt will be made to either kidnap or to kill him. Let men from Ireland, men who will be resisting the unity of Ireland, will be responsible for this. It will be found very, very soon, in about five years' time, that one of the royal children, I will not say which one, has taken drugs. They will be innocent drugs, but the enemies of England will blow this thing out of all proportion. In the great upheaval, that will shake the world in the next 50 years. Strange and completely unexpected things are going to happen. It is all this upheaval within the British royal family which will cause the breakaway of Scotland as the United Kingdom disintegrates and Ulster goes its way as Wales says farewell to Mother England and becomes a little state on its own. So will mighty Canada break away from the British Commonwealth. Let me tell you that two other countries will do the same. One of these countries will be Australia and the other will be New Zealand. Australia will be torn away from the British Commonwealth by a man who will be enraged at the fact that the Commonwealth is becoming more and more dominated by non-white people. This man is already alive, but when his time comes, this man will be numbered amongst the greatest leaders that the English race had ever known. This man will confront the rising empire of Japan and China, a huge conglomerate of nations which will dominate the world with money. This man will confront those nations and he will be not afraid of sending out his armies against them. By the middle of the 21st century, I see the Union Jack very, very strange in appearance indeed. Gone will be the cross of St. Andrew. Gone will be the cross of Ireland. The Union Jack will no longer be a Union Jack. It will be just a red cross on a blue background. In fact, by the end of the 21st century, Great Britain will have become part of Europe, a republic ruled from Berlin. A disturbing vision reveals the origin of the AIDS virus. There is a shadow gliding over this world. I had a horrible dream, a hideous vision of what it was, where it came from, and what it would do. I was shown a laboratory somewhere in the United States of America. I was shown scientists of several nations, French, British and American and Canadian, all collaborating in a hideous experiment, which was to introduce diseases, which would wipe out whole armies, which would debilitate whole populations in times of war. And one of these diseases is the thing we call AIDS. 
AIDS is a man-made disease created as a weapon of war, a weapon of war which proved so terrible that it had to be abandoned. They could not destroy the virus. They gave it to a firm of toxic waste disposals. But by that time, a number of containers of this hideous disease, which were yellow on the outside of very thick metal with the glass containers inside them, had already been taken to the land of the Germans. And there they had been stored in a secret place. Someone suggested that some of them should be dumped into the North Sea, not far from the west of Scandinavia. But others said no, they should be taken with other poisonous waste to third world countries and buried there. A ship came from Europe bearing these containers and one of them had a fault in its lid. A little accident occurred and a sailor touched one of the yellow cylinders and was contaminated by it through cuts in his hands. Well, there have been reports now of this British seamen that went back to about 1954 when the uh, chap died in England and they went back and they had his tissues and they had blood and they went and tested it and he was, he was found to be HIV positive. When the ship arrived in West Africa, the cylinders were taken up aboard a truck and from there they were taken aboard a dirty looking helicopter. I could see them clearly what they did. This was contrary to agreement reached between this company and a corrupt African official. Because the agreement had been that a hole should be dug very deep, but the official and his friends decided to pocket the money. They decided simply to dump the waste in an African lake in a country called Cameroon. Some of the local villagers started becoming sick. And then the disease spread into Central Africa. In the very near future, people dying of AIDS will pose the greatest security threat that the Western civilization has ever seen. All life is a malady. If you can find the right rhythm, you can cure the patient. The people who created AIDS have the effrontery to say that AIDS is a disease of African origin. Have the cheek to say that AIDS was created by God in order to put an end to promiscuity on this planet, which is absolute nonsense. What I find most horrifying is that the same people are telling us a blatant lie that AIDS is incurable. It is curable. It can be cured, but not by drugs. My visions tell me, in order to cure AIDS, sound in various forms must be used. If the sound is carefully calculated, the sound would be capable of destroying the AIDS viruses within the human being without endangering the human being at all. Credo has had precise visions of how, when and where World War III will begin and spread. I am shown that in the very near future, Islam will rise like a lion throughout the world and that a new war will break out in the Middle East even bloodier than the war that was fought against Saddam Hussein. A great Middle Eastern nation, I think it is Iran, will go all out to acquire atomic power 
Iran will buy terrible substances from China. Substances by which you can create atomic power stations. Substances by which also you can create atomic bombs and other hideous weapons of that kind. I see that there is a ship in the ocean. It is an old and ugly vessel which should have been sunk or scrapped long ago. And it is taking some radioactive substance to Iran. One of the containers will overheat and the ship will sink in the Indian Ocean. At first, the world will not be told about the sinking of this ship. Millions of fish start drifting, dead and lifeless, towards the beaches of India, of East Africa and Arabia. And the first inkling of this disaster that humanity will have will be when starving people in India and other countries nearby, they will eat this fish and they too will die. And it will be only then that the world will be away. People of the news will go to India to look into this disaster and they will discover that many organizations were responsible for covering up this tragedy. In many parts of the world, people shall start eating each other. In the coast of Yemen and in the coast of India shall be found people who will die because they have eaten other people who have eaten the contaminated fishes and there will be an outcry in the world and the violence and the warfare will spread not only in the Middle East but also throughout North Africa as far away as Spain. President Clinton will unwittingly play a crucial role in precipitating World War III. This terrible accident involving the radioactive ship will either take place during President Clinton's second term of office or late in his first term of office. He will overreact and unleash war and sanctions against Iran. The great president laid the bloody foundations for what must surely be the greatest religious war that the world has ever seen. And that war is not far away in the future. This man, upon whose shoulders the iron hand of history rests so heavy, Oh, Bill Clinton, I wish you could see what I see. I wish you could see what lies in your future. I am sure that there will be two violent attempts on President Clinton's life. That one of these attempts will be made upon the President by someone with a remarkably dark skin, someone who will be either an African-American or a Hispanic person. The president will survive both these attempts, but there is another form of attack which will follow this, and this one will actually shatter the president's life. It will be started by a woman because this president's greatest enemies are going to be women. A woman will come very close 
to destroying Clinton's career as a president of his country. More than this, I do not wish to say. After President Clinton, there will come one other male president in the United States who will rule for two terms and be killed in an accident. After that president, there will come a female president who will be a red-headed woman, a former actress of French ancestry. This woman will become the ruler of Canada, the United States, and Central America, which three great masses of country will come under one leadership. No longer will there be the United States of America. No longer will there be the dominion of Canada. The whole country will simply be called the American Federation. A powerful German leader will unite Europe and Great Britain. Somewhere in the early years of the 21st century, Europe will become one republic. She will fall under the shield of Germany because a mighty ruler will emerge in Germany. In fact, he is already there. He will emerge and he will rule Germany with a rod of iron. And he will achieve with cold cunning what Hitler tried to achieve by brute force. And oddly enough, this brutal man, this second Hitler, will be hailed as the savior of Europe because he will strengthen the economies of the different states that form Europe. And they will call him the new Bismarck. The United Nations will crumble. And in its place, there will be a new League of Nations. Very, very soon, the United Nations is going to fall into pieces. In Europe, there will come a new League, whose flag will be blue, with a large four-pointed star in the center. I see this flag waving with menace over Africa and over the Middle East and over India and over Australia. Millions will succumb to the appearance of a man who will be seen as their savior. There is a young man. His eyes burn like those of a god. He has got a little moustache. He wears the white turban of an Ayatollah. He is a man of Iran. He is the man who, within the next 20 years or so, will shake the world to its foundation. He is at present in his late teens or early 20s. He is a great admirer of Saddam Hussein, and at one time they once met. This man is the man about whom many prophets have spoken in the past. Some call him the Antichrist. In Africa they call him the Red Destroyer, the Mushiki Wadamu, the Lord of Blood. This is the man who is going to lead the rising hordes of Islam, whom future generations will call the shining sword of Allah, who is going to fight, shed blood and destroy cities, to restore once again the glory of the caliphs. He will know himself as the Wahhab al-Rashid, he will know himself as Al-Timsah. 
It is this man who is standing in the shadows at this moment, who is going to carry on where his admired godfather Saddam Al Hussein has left off. I wish the leaders of the United States should be aware of the existence of this man because as they are humiliating and ill-treating the Muslims, they are only giving strength to this man who's going to stand in a battle tank above the ruined cathedral of Christendom in Greece who is going to extend the influence of the Lord Muhammad from the western shores of India to the rock Jebel al tariq Gibraltar. And against his anger and against his might, not even the mightiest hydrogen bombs will prevail. <laughs> Salam alaikum al Khalif. Al Saif Ul Allah, sword of God, my eyes see you and my eyes are frightened of you. In the next four or five years, Muslim fundamentalists will try to reclaim the entire empire which was once held by the Saracens. They will claim Spain as their country. They will claim Portugal and all of North Africa. And some of these fundamentalists are going to decree that no ship should ever pass through the Straits of Gibraltar without money being paid to them. This dangerous movement will be based in the country called Morocco or Algeria and one day a group of these men in a number of small boats will attack a beautiful cruise liner of Greek origin and aboard her will die several people who are well known in the American film world today. The attack upon the ship will bring down the rage of the United States and the United Nations upon the perpetrators. And one of these men, whose name will be Yusuf, will commit a serious outrage in a European city. He will cause a tremendous explosion which could damage the Eiffel Tower. The future of the Catholic Church will hang in the balance. In Italy, the Pope will be murdered and the world will be told a lie that he had died a natural death. I see clearly how His Holiness will meet his end. It will be in a procession inside a church, a great church, and a murderer disguised as a priest, in fact, a real priest will approach the Pope and using the back of his crozier, which he will be holding, will strike the Pope in the leg, apparently by accident. And a tiny device at the bottom of the crozier will inject a tiny ball of poison into the Holy One's leg. And the Pope will die. The Catholic Church will split down the middle and down the middle again. The Catholic Church will never have a Pope again for about 20 years or more. And then a group of militant women, female terrorists, will take up arms and forcibly install a female as a Pope in the Vatican. Shocking experiments are still being conducted. I am shown something that is taking place in some laboratories in the Far East. 
experiment which I aimed at creating a new race of people which can survive underwater. The men and the women conducting this experiment are torturing dolphins. Dolphins are being forced to act as surrogate mothers to human fetuses and metal implants are being put into them. These people who are doing these things should be exposed to the anger of the caring world. These experiments and others like them should be stopped. Crashing economies bring strange new devices. People are going to lie and cheat. People are going to steal. People are going to exploit others as never before, all in the name of free enterprise and business. Very, very soon, I am shown, there is going to be a serious money crisis in the Western world. This crisis will affect first the United States with heavy loss of jobs and the crash of the dollar. This will lead to similar situations in Europe, in Asia, and especially also in Japan. This is going to last about five years. And I say that this thing will come before the year 1998. There will be more homeless people in the streets. This will result in new types of building being invented, buildings which will be erected very quickly and which will house as many people as possible but with the minimum of comfort. Your vehicle and your neighbor's vehicle will be built to a pattern so that these vehicles can be attached to a, a huge central pole like a giant pillar vehicle above vehicle forming a building in which you will live it will be the solution to humanity's living problem somewhere in the middle of the 21st century a radical change takes place the streets are no longer coated with the tar but with a certain type of metallic composition and the car floats in the air with a tiny little aerial pointing downwards towards the street. And it is this aerial which lifts the car into the air. So long as the car is in contact with this metallic road, so long shall the car float. People will travel in very huge aeroplanes, bigger than anything that we have got today. Now these aeroplanes will be strange in that they will be able to travel not only in the air but also on top of the sea and also under it. These aeroplanes which will be built by the Japanese will have gigantic wings at the back where great boosters will be housed and these aeroplanes would rise into space like space shuttles in the very near future and I say 10 years from now people will no longer buy clothes they will have a beautiful little machine small enough to stand on their kitchen table and from this machine they will be able to make their own clothes the machine will squeeze out tubes of material which you can change at the press of a button to any color and you will make any attire that you choose, no matter how outlandish. The chosen race joins the Orient to find the promised land. As we go deeper and deeper into the womb of the future, for about 50 years, the nations of China and Japan and Malaysia and many islands in the Pacific will dominate the world the former world powers will fade away. Japan will use the Chinese as the blade of her sword.
and using this sword of hard work, of technology, and of money, the nation of Bushido, Nihon, will take vengeance for what was done to her people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Japan will be joined by one nation, and I'm surprised to name this nation, the nation of Israel. They will abandon Palestine. They will abandon Jerusalem and carve a new nation of Israel in the eastern border of Egypt. And there, Israel shall become part of the federation of Middle Eastern countries. There are people thought to have died who are still living. There are those who say that the great Elvis Presley is still alive. Please, they should let that great man, that misguided soul, rest in peace. He died. Let me tell you about people who are said to have died, but who lived long after their supposed deaths, whose survival will affect our future very, very seriously. One of these people is the man called Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler never died in Berlin, neither did his wife Eva Braun. He escaped with a large group of scientists and military officers. They went to South America. Eva Brown is still alive. In my visions, many years ago, I saw two girls. These were the children of Adolf Hitler. One girl's name began with an O, and the other one began with a K. A whiskey or something like that, and the other one was called Christian or Christelle. These girls survived. They are there. There are Nazi groups in Europe who are aware of the fact that Hitler left children and grandchildren when he died. And these descendants of Adolf Hitler are going to create great havoc somewhere in the middle years of the 21st century.